Hello, welcome to the Real Meal Podcast. This is a family-friendly show where we don't say any bad words or any fucked up shit. My name is Jacob. I'm Joseph. And on today's episode, we're going to reflect on one of the best times of my life. Okay, so back in 2015, about early 2015, I started hanging out with this kid named Joseph. Yeah, boy. And a couple of his other homies, uh, particularly Austin and Marcus. So, me being a, a pop punk kid, not really leaving the boundaries of that. Uh, I was invited to this metal festival called the Rockstar Mayhem Festival. That was all for my birthday. Yep, and me not wanting to turn down something, you know, unique to me at least, I accepted and we went, I think it was July 26th? It was the 26th, yeah. June 26th, I think, actually. Something with with a J. Yeah, one (laughs) of the J's. But, um... Yeah, we headed over there, and uh, you experienced your first metal show. How, how was it? My first metal show, yes. Now, I remember I remember when I looked at the lineup, I saw Slayer. And the only mention that I've ever heard of Slayer before was in a Blink-182 song, Dysentery Gary. Uh, they mentioned listening to Slayer in there, so I was like, Oh my god, Blink-182 knows them, so this must be cool. This must be a band that I could get into. So, me being, like, completely oblivious to metal, Metal. I went into it completely blind, and, yeah, it was definitely an experience at first sight. I remember the first thing that I see was when we arrived. All the the clothing. All the, no, not the clothing. The fucking corpse paint. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) There's a long-ass line that surprisingly moved really fast. Mm Mm-hmm. And just seeing, like, a whole bunch of, like, coked-out metalheads getting ready to fucking just destroy each other in the pit. I have never even seen a fucking mosh pit in person, either. I remember you guys were showing me videos of, like, what goes down. (laughs) I was trying to get you, like, give you an idea of what to be prepared for, but, like, like like I was saying at that time, yeah, like, the videos don't do its justice. It's like, once you're there, it feels so much bigger. It is so much bigger. Yeah. And it's painful. Yeah. It's fun, though. So, oh, shit. When we got there, like, a whole bunch of indie bands were playing. Or not really indie bands, but there's a smaller stage. And a bunch of bands are playing on that. I remember as soon as we got there, fucking Code Orange was playing. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. I <laughs> that, was, that was my first exposure to a metal metal performance and all i see is their bald ass bass player fucking banging his head i'm like holy shit what the fuck did i sign up for (laughs) fucking i remember um everybody over there was like smoking smoking weed and stuff and drunk guys too yeah there was a lot of uh, a lot of drunk dudes a lot of people high out of their minds it's pretty cool though because like obviously everybody's there for the same thing you're all there to listen to metal and have a good time and um but since there were so many people smoking weed, you got contact high really fucking easily. I remember that, yep. When we were in front of Code Orange, <clears throat> when we were watching them for a little bit, you remember I was I was about to walk into the pit. Yeah. I started walking towards it, and Marcus grabs my shoulder. He's like, hold on real quick. Want to go get some fries or something? <laughs> <I remember laughs> he that. was contact yeah. high, and it was... I was, dude, that was probably, yeah, I was contact high, too. I think we all were. Yeah, we all were, but like... Even fucking Austin was. Yeah, but... <laughs> some showed it more than others yeah that was that was funny so we went and got what was it like a fucking twenty dollar burger and twenty dollar yeah bacon barbecue yeah something like that cheeseburger and here's the funny thing i'm a picky ass eater i don't like most shit but i was so fucking hungry out of my like i i ate whatever was on that <laughs> Yeah, we, we literally cut the burger up into four pieces so we could all eat some. That shit was delicious. <laughs> yeah, that was hella good. Uh, that was the best fucking burger I've had. And we got a that large day. coke. <laughs> and we got a large coke and shared that. And uh, yeah, had a good time. Yeah, it was definitely fun. That, that or that part was. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was just like that was barely the beginning. 
I remember after every performance, everybody would, like, get down and go to the bathroom as well. Yeah. And after every fucking performance, the bathroom would get more packed, more mm-hmm. packed. The bigger um, the band is, like, the more people are in the bathrooms for whatever reason. That's just how it seems it goes. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I remember, like, hearing that shit, seeing that shit for the first time. It was definitely a life-changing experience because... I was exposed to something new and something that I would eventually become, like, very passionate about. But, uh, at the time, I didn't know that I was gonna love this shit so much. I was scared out of my fucking mind. I was so excited. (laughs) I, like, I think, yeah, that was your first metal concert. That was Austin's, I think that was his first concert and Marcus's first concert. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it was like, I'm just kind of introducing something that I love doing to you guys. Mm-hmm. And you would say that I probably like picked up most. Yeah, you picked up the most. Well, well, like when it came to the music part, yes. But when it came to like moshing and stuff, Austin, Ar- like Austin and Marcus were like natural at it. Yeah, they just jumped in and started beating I, the shit out of people, and it was hella funny. I had to grow into that. Yeah. Now I'll do it, but at the time I was like, "Fuck no, those are big people. They'll hurt me." I remember there was that. Uh, I think it was during the Slayer set. No, it wasn't. It was um. It might have been the Devil Wears Prada, when that one girl in like all the, like the whole like leather, like top and bottom, she was just standing in the middle of the pit like she was a badass and she was like, pointing at people and, and like pretty much taunting them, and she I remember she pointed at me so I was like all right bet so I went around like two or three times mm-hmm. and I shoulder checked the shit out of her she fell to the ground she laughed and I helped her up and she kept on going at me oh yeah that shit hurt she she was small and bony so it hurt more dude yeah actually i think that was hell yeah was it? I, re- I remember like sitting down throughout the devil wars prada mm. but uh by the time hell yeah came out your dad fucking told me hey check that out <laughs> and i was like what so i looked behind me and the fucking mosh pit's starting up and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger we had to move our blanket yeah i, rem- I remember I don't know which which set it was, but uh, I remember telling you, uh, yeah, you might want to move up a little bit. Yeah. Like, I, like, you can tell when, like, a pit's going to be big because you see people spreading out farther and farther. Mm-hmm. And I saw people start doing that, and I was like, yo, Jacob, you might want to move up. But, like, I, I know you probably don't want to hop in the mosh pit. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then, uh, yeah, you, you moved up a little bit, but not enough. Dude, we were, like, completely against the fucking gate. That's why I could You could have gone a little bit farther. That would have helped. I mean, dude, our spots were so good, though. We were, like, completely against the wire. Yeah. Like For um, for those of you that don't know, uh, it was at Shoreline Amphitheater. Yeah. In Mountain View. And um, that amphitheater, like, all the chairs and stuff is up. Like, that's all up front. And then... In the back is, like, the lawn seats. That's where everybody, like, is standing, and they have their blankets or their lawn chairs or whatever they, whatever it may be, and that's where all the mosh pits occur. It's a good place to go see concerts. Yeah, it's my favorite place. Because in the seats, there's not a bad view. No. But uh, even on the lawn, you get to do, all like, all the cool shit. You get to bring your own chairs, you know, have a good time. Yeah. When I saw Joe Rogan... Mm-hmm. No matter like where we sat, we had a good view. Yeah, and especially like... at that <clears throat> concert because we were right up against like the front of the lawn. All right, see everything perfectly. Yeah, it's like with the um, one of the good things about the Shoreline Amphitheater mm-hmm. is like it's like even when you're in the lawn, like yes, you can't really see the stage too too well. You can't see everybody on the stage very well. But they also have. A bunch of screens up on like the the light posts to where you can see it, it's they've obviously got a camera going around following them and like showing them the bands or Joe Rogan oh yeah <laughs> like the the act or whatever it may be they have that so you can see it just fine I don't know I like that me too um yeah I remember uh what was it. Oh, it was another show in the indie pit because, like, after the, that ended, that's, like, when the main band started. Like, the main band started on the fucking the big stage. Yeah. 
but uh, I also I, I I remember this is I think it was the last band on the small stage. We were uh, time to crack open the first rock star of this, the first and only rock star of this podcast. Yep. <laughs> We're going to get into the rock star portion later. It's fucking insane, but... And you're taking a sip right now. Let me get a sip of that, actually. So, I remember watching the mosh pits on the indie stage. And for a second, I was thinking, man, you should fucking jump in. Just get the experience of it. Just live in the moment, bro. Jump in. So, like, I was fucking debating on it. You were already in it. Yeah, I was the first one in it. Me and Marcus. Marcus had, my like, his hand on my shoulder. And he was like, you going to do it? you going to do it? And I was like, yeah, fuck. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to fucking do it. And then next thing you know, this motherfucker comes out of the pit with a giant slash on his face. Fucking dripping blood. <laughs> and I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> so that completely, like, fucking changed my, like, I, I, sw- I, sw- I, I pussied out. <laughs> and after seeing that, I was like, fuck, dude, I hope that dude's okay. And I remember in that pit, there was a giant-ass Braun Strowman-looking motherfucker <laughs> with blue corpse paint on. That dude was mowing everybody down. You remember? <laughs> yeah, I got barged by him several <laughs> times. That shit hurt. But yeah, the guy with the slash on his face, I remember talking to him. I was like, you good, bro? He's like, yeah, man. I'm fucking great. And I was like, all right, cool. Do, you do you. And then that was the last I saw him. Yeah, dude, that, that shit scared the fuck out of me. So I was like, oh, nope, I'm going to get injured. <laughs> So, yeah, after that, I was, I was watching from the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of, like, every time I go to a concert like that, I have the, the mindset of, like, if I'm in the pit and I get hurt, I'm going to I'm gonna get hurt doing something I fucking love doing. So I don't really care. Yeah, it's going to be an expensive hospital bill, considering I'm, I might just have to fucking take an ambulance ride. Or, if not that, I mean... The, still like the medical bills and shit yeah for like, sure yeah outrageous but I don't know I, I risk it for the biscuit you know what I mean yeah I like to have fun and if I get hurt oh well fuck it eh <laughs> so uh yeah then after the main band started I was, I don't know I wasn't into Devil Wars product I never was and probably never will be uh, I was into them for like a little bit and Mainly around that concert. <laughs> I say never was. Like, I listened to them before. I wasn't into them while I was listening to them for the first time. Yeah. By the time, like, Hell Yeah came on, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. King Diamond came on, I was like, fucking A, bro. Yeah. As soon as he played Eye of the Witch, I was like... That high note, bro. I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. I think that was, like, the Abigail tour as well. Yeah. So they played Abigail, like, front to back. Abigail, like, I think that was one of my favorite songs that they played on that set i'm not gonna lie Uh, yeah i don't know that there was just something about that (laughs) it was just like uh i could listen to that song over and over again i was i was i was gonna say uh fucking with like king diamond's performance was like where the set started pop popping (laughs) ah burp (laughs) there we go (laughs) one more Okay, that's it. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, the sets really started to, like, pop. King Diamond's fucking visuals were badass. They were, like, at a, what, like a chapel? Yeah. King Diamond had a staircase that could go up. There's a fucking giant pentagram, two crosses on the side. You remember what his mic looked like? Yeah, his mic was a fucking wig. <laughs> no, it was, it was fucking cross. It was, cro- a, it was, it was a, uh, a cross? Yeah, bones. inverted cross, yeah. yeah. I was thinking of another for the show. Yeah. But, uh, yeah just like the overall visual and then like the backdrops would drop abigail's backdrop would be center focus it's just a very very like amazing sight yeah it's like i i realized that every like metal concert that i've gone to they get the visuals down to a fucking t yeah i'm I'm, i've always liked like set designs and shit that's Mm -hmm. always been like a big deal with me yeah like i've gone i've gone to a number like different genres like I've seen a couple different kind of like music. How am I? What am, what are my words? I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've seen many different bands of many different genres, and I've never seen any other genre do like pay attention to their um, their uh, like 
their whole visuals. I've never yeah, the seen set design. Yeah, the set design. I've never seen anybody else really pay that much attention to it. Like I've gone and I've I've seen, I've only seen Green Day once. And they they didn't really focus too much on the visuals. Yeah, um, it was just pretty much like a fucking screen, wasn't it? Yeah. That just then, said uh, Revolution Radio the whole yeah. time. And then uh, I saw my first concert was ZZ Top. It wasn't really about the uh, like the visuals. It was more about the people. Like I get that, but I feel like the visuals is a big part of like any really like concert really. Yeah, that really like brings it to life. It really does. Like when Slayer came on set. You remember that? I know you yeah, remember that. Yeah, I remember fucking both times. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see. Fucking Slayer's. Slayer pretty much just had a screen, but it's the fucking opening to that show that I'll never forget. And that one aspect I was looking forward to when we went to go see them in 2018, it's when they were coming out, Delusions of Savior was starting. As soon as like, it kicks in, they show the fucking four crosses and they just and they slowly flip, slowly flip, and then the fucking four pentagrams are all on the backdrop. Yeah. As soon as picking up, as soon as like Repentless starts, the backdrop drops. And uh, I remember at the Mayhem Fest, they just played to a screen, mm-hmm. and the screen was like showing a whole bunch of different things. I thought that was cool. I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah. But I mean, at like 2018s, it was all just like backdrops. It was all like right covers. Mm-hmm. But at the Mayhem Fest, you know, just seeing like the different visuals. I remember when they played fucking Dead Skin Mask. I remember, you remember the pyro in that one? Yeah. That man, was... I remember looking at the, like the video screens too, and I was thinking, "Man, these motherfuckers are scary." <laughs> yeah. Because it's like that's not something that you see on a daily basis, when, especially no. when you don't like listen to metal like that. Yeah, I'm used to like fucking pop punkers with like long cargo shorts and sideward caps i wasn't Sorry. expecting like big beards <laughs> evil yeah devil shit <laughs> hey but i'm glad i saw that shit because it made me open up my eyes a little bit <laughs> yeah like a- anybody who's like doesn't really listen to metal too much like that if you ever have the opportunity to go to a metal concert i highly suggest it um and if you do ever go into it with an open mind because if you if you go in thinking like just if you go in with a closed mind, you're not gonna get a really fun experience. You're just gonna be like, oh yeah, whatever. Like this, this is stupid. Yeah, I didn't get the fucking music at first, mm-hmm. but I had a good ass time. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's not always about like. Well, yeah, going to a concert is about the music, but a big big part of it, like going to a concert for me, is like if i'm having a good time like that's that's what really makes it for me if i'm having a bad time at a concert like what's the point of me going i I went to have a good time i had a bad time like i've never really had that experience though so it's like i was chilling i i fucking love it i'm not gonna stop going to metal concerts or concerts in general (laughs) yeah concerts in general whether it be local shows or or uh Whatever else it may be. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that 100%. Uh, another thing, like, I took away from this was just, like, the sense of community. Yeah. Everybody was, like, there for each other. Everybody was, like, looking out for one another. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody falls, pick them back up. You know, somebody... I, I met a whole bunch of people, you know. I never talked to them again after that, but at that... We're so in the moment, you know, just... It's cool to meet a whole bunch of people and just like have this shared interest. Right. That's, that's really what I. As as dug cheesy the most. as it sounds, it's like whenever you go to a metal concert, like I said earlier, you're all there going like you're all going there for the same reason. You're there to have a good time to listen to, listen to some good metal, and just fucking live in it. Yeah. And so everybody kind of feels like a family. Like I have social anxiety. Mm-hmm. I I it's hard for me to talk to somebody I know sometimes, or somebody I don't know. I, I know for all my friends, you probably disagree with that, but it takes a lot out of me. Um, but, like, whenever I'm at a metal concert, I feel like I belong. I know that sounds super fucking cheesy and cliche, but, like, that's how it is. It's like, I, I don't like crowded places. I could go to Disneyland and have a terrible time. 
but at a metal concert, like, everybody's family. Like, you can talk to anybody, and they'll be, like, the coolest fucking people. And I noticed that a lot with, like, the, like, legit OG Slayer fans. Yeah. Like, they're, they're sitting there fucking telling you, like, this and that, like, the history of the band, or, like, or they're just rambling on about something, and it's, they're cool people. Yeah. And even, like, even for, like, the new, like, the new fans, pretty much all you had to do is just go, like, go up to them, look at their shirt, and be like, fucking Slayer! Yeah. And then, like, that's, they would repeat it, and, you know, that's, that's a sense of community through, like, the fan base, you Yeah, know? you, literally every five minutes, like, not even every five minutes, every couple seconds, you, all you hear is, fucking Slayer! Dude, I was saying that, and I haven't even fucking heard them yet. Yeah. <laughs> It was just so cool, you know? I, I think you were the one screaming it out of, like, the, like the most out of all of us. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, when you started doing that, I it it made me happy because I knew you were, like, you were feeling good. You were, like, excited. Yeah. You were really, like, feeling it. I was in the I was in the moment, dude. Yeah. I, I was embracing an environment that I wasn't comfortable in. Yeah, exactly. And I was making the most of it, too. The best part about it for me was, uh, you know, every, every everybody was just so kind to each other, and everybody just everybody was there to have a good time, and nobody was like really sour. Mm-hmm. Like it's like it's funny because like even when there's like fights and stuff, like say somebody gets in a fight, and when nobody in nobody intervenes, they let the fight go on, and. Once they're done fighting, they get up, they give each other a hug, and they go get each other a beer. How like, fucking cool is that? <laughs> like I've I've been to a, like two or three rap concerts in my life, or rap shows, or whatever you want to fucking call it. And the hip hop shit. Sure. <laughs> and uh, underground. I, I've, I've seen people get in fights. Like in in those two or three concerts that I've been to, I've seen people get in fights. I've watched somebody get jumped at one of those shows, and everybody got kicked out. There was bad blood throughout the rest of the night. Yeah, but you don't get that same kind of thing at a metal concert. Like I've been to so many metal concerts in my life, and every fight I've ever seen was one on one. When they were done, there was no bad blood behind it. They would, like I said, get get up, hug each other, and go get each other a beer. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And then then you're fucking best friends the rest of the night. Like. <laughs> yeah, and you can exchange emails. Fucking talk to them. Forever, <laughs> they could be the best man at your wedding, all because you kicked their ass at a metal concert. Honestly, bro, no, it's like, <laughs> hey, I'm just saying right now, if you fucking buy them a beer at a metal show, that's how you know they mean a lot to you because those motherfuckers are like 14 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> and people just blow their money on that shit left and right. People like, blow their money and they fucking waste it. <laughs> like I get it, beer's good, but I'm in the crowd. I'm not gonna risk a fucking 15 dollar. Like not, like half of a solo cup of beer yeah. for fucking, and then j- just to go up back into the crowd and spill it everywhere. Like yeah, I'm not, exactly. I'm not doing that, bro. Fucking dude, uh, shit. I don't know how we didn't talk about this. All the fucking like hammered people we saw there. Oh my god. You remember that one bald dude who was he was like like, s- like spray painted fucking silver. Yeah, I remember he was sitting on the curb and like he lean forward a bit and just head planted the fucking ground yeah i also i also remember uh i don't know if it was the same dude or if it was a different one he was in line by like one of the stands and he fucking crashed into like the guardrails yeah <laughs> that was that was crazy like they had to like uh, i don't know what they did to them but i didn't see him after that uh-uh. i think they just kind of pulled him into the fucking booth and like gave him water and you know Hydrate their yeah, asses. Hydrated them, fucking gave them bread or something. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's funny because like a lot of those like hammered people that you saw and like like not in the crowd at the main stage, just like yeah. down there like waiting for the bathrooms or like waiting to get a rock star or something, or waiting in line to get a beer or whatever it may be. You saw those people hammered as shit, and then after that, you never saw them again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I. I was curious. I was like, "Those guys die? Do they just put them out of their misery?" <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's metal, but w- it's not. It's like not that. sacrificial. Yeah, exactly. That's not that show. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just remember thinking, 
What happened to these guys? Are these guys okay? Wow, I've never seen somebody that drunk before in person. <laughs> I was like, how are you going to get that fucked up and like... How are you going to get that fucked up before the show? <laughs> right? If I want to get fucked up, I'm going to get fucked up like towards the end of the show. And even then, I'm really hesitant on like actually getting fucked up because I want to see it. I want to be there to experience that show. Yeah. I don't want to be blacked out drunk. And miss everything out. I didn't want to spend fucking... How much did I spend on those tickets? Like, fucking 400 bucks? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> like, 400 bucks on those tickets. And I didn't want to, like, waste that $400 to black out. Like, get, granted, I was, like, fucking, what, 15, 16 at the time? Yeah, I think... Like, I obviously yeah, wasn't going to be getting drunk or anything, but, like, I'm talking about now. Like, I think the last Slayer show that, like, we went to was, like... How much did I spend on those ones? Those were cheap. Yeah, those were those were a lot cheaper. I think it was like seventy six bucks for the seats that we got yeah, each. Yeah, seventy six each. I actually had the fucking ticket next by or like right by. I don't know where it's at though. Yeah, mine's in my room still. Ooh, voice crack. Hello. Oh, that's not that's a paper airplanes ticket. <laughs> but uh, yeah, fucking. Can I say paper airplanes? No. <laughs> Backtracking a little bit more, <clears throat> that was the first time I was introduced to Bible thumpers as well. <laughs> Man, I have a story for fucking 2018 Slayer concert, but at that, I was wondering, what the fuck are these guys doing? <laughs> and you saw me making fun of them and giving them shit. <laughs> it's funny how, like, three years later, I'd be doing the same thing, yep. but, like, worse. Oh, I didn't threaten to kill them or anything, but... No, I mean, like, they... they... Uh, it's so funny because you can't say anything to those motherfuckers because they live for that attention. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, you're proving our point right. Well, see, Going I, to hell, God hates. Me. I don't. I don't care. Like, I'm gonna say something to him. Like, yeah. I I get it. I respect religion. I'm not bashing it whatsoever. But if you're a Bible thumper like that and you're standing outside of a fucking concert, go fuck yourself, bitch. Go fuck yourself. Just stop. Like. That's that's not it. Like, if you're sitting there fucking judging people for the music they listen to, and what happened? Oh, okay, never mind. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that right there. That no more Christian stuff. I'll talk about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was just so fucking funny seeing like these these what four assholes in a fucking barricade shell, and uh. With a megaphone pretty much insulting us, you know, like, God hates fags and God hates metal. Y'all are going to hell for attending this fucking rancid Slayer show. Of course, they didn't say fuck because they're, you know. They're Christians. They would never. (laughs) Yeah. But, I mean, like, thinking to myself, whoa, you cocksuckers. (laughs) That's not very fucking kind. That's That's not very Christian of you. (laughs) <laughs> to be judging me for my own uh, personal interests and shit. Only God can judge. <laughs> man, oh man, I wonder what they would have said if I would have told them. I'm not actually into metal. I'm just here to experience it for the first time. <laughs> they They'd pro- probably, they probably pull would... me over the fucking guardrail and like be like, you're saved now. They probably would baptize you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, they would have just fucking sprayed me with the... Holy water. Yeah. <laughs> That's hella funny. No, but um... So, uh, about those rock stars, though. Okay, now we're going to get into the portion of the show where I almost died. <laughs> so, we mentioned this in the last episode. We mentioned oh, uh, quite a few things we mentioned already in the last episode. I know in the last episode, for sure, we mentioned the rock stars. Yeah. And we mentioned that stupid cunt who fucking walked with her baby through the mosh pit. Yeah. Which, we'll, we'll get into that one a little bit more. So... I'm glad that we could actually speak more on this now. Like, dedicate a whole fucking segment to this. This was the Rockstar Mayhem Festival. Sponsored by Rockstar Energy. Drinks there were like six bucks a soda and they fucking uncapped it for you. And they weren't very big either. Nah, they weren't. They were just like the standard 16 ounce bottles. Yeah. If you're, hot, if you're thirsty on the hot day that it was, you're going to fucking drink. Drink it. Like, you're going to gulp that shit down. I mean, they have water fountains, but the water was scorching hot. So, it being a, a festival sponsored by Rockstar, they're debuting three new flavors. Organic, Pina Colada, and Lime Freeze. So, those were free. They're in a, an 8-ounce can, about like the standard Red Bull can. Yeah. 
and you're just free to go to the tent and grab one. They'll fucking they'll crack it open for you. And just try it out. Nice and cold. Nice and cold. On a hot day, that's exactly what you want, but it's not what you need. <laughs> no. So I should dehydrate you so yeah. fast. So this not only was it my first time attending a metal festival, this was my first time drinking a fucking energy drink. <laughs> I've never had it. I've never had an energy drink before. And on this show, since these were the only free drinks that we could get, because we're pretty broke. Yeah. I, I was bumming money off of my dad every now and then for, yeah. for some sort of food. I remember got a churro for like four bucks. <laughs> yeah. That was a good ass churro, but. It wasn't very big. The first flavor that I got was the organic one, and I was like, man, this is it. This is where my life begins again. Huh. And I drank it, and I was like, this shit tastes like. Booty hole. This shit tastes like wood. <laughs> I was like, this is what these fuckers drink. And the pina colada. I've never like been a fan of like pina, pina colada flavor. Sue me, but... I didn't see the lime freeze at first. I went to the tent to like choke down another organic and I saw lime freeze and I was like, mmm, what's that? Because I'm a big lime fan. Lime is like my favorite flavor of anything. Like lime otter pops, lime shots. The, the popsicle shots, not the... <laughs> Not the alcohol. little, the little like dip and dot shots, not not alcohol. Alcohol. But anything lime, like the lime uh, Haritos, I like those. So I tried this lime Rockstar. First sip, you were hooked. First sip, I was fucked. <laughs> Next thing you know, I was gulping that shit down, going back to the tent, grabbing two at a time, being like, "Hey, you want one?" You would say no. I'd be like, "Well, more for me." Just I was I was gulping them down one by one by one by one by one. Next thing you know, I had fucking eight, and I'm flipping my fucking shit. I'm surprised you didn't die. I'm, I'm surprised, surprised I, I didn't. didn't die. Die. I'm surprised we didn't die. And then Mr. Healthy Austin over here is like just, no, nah, I'm good. I don't, I don't want. I don't drink those. I remember he took a silently, sip and then he threw up. Yeah, silently judging us too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Who knows how much Marcus drank, but he likes to make fun of me for how much I drank. I think I drank the most out of all of you. His fucking... I remember just... I was doing the same thing as you. Like, I remember I would disappear for, like, five minutes at a time, and then I would come back with, like, four rock stars in my fucking hands. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God, dude. We only say eight, but we're making it sound like we grabbed, like, the whole fucking stock. That's a lot, dude. <laughs> I swear, like... I lost count after ten. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. And that's just on the line freeze app. I, like, I would say I drank half an organic, half a pina colada, so in total nine, but eight, and lime freezes, eight. I, I drank a lot more than that, and I, I should be dead. I'm... I should be dead. My fucking body was virgin to that shit. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> And that's I just the packed thing. that shit down on a hot-ass day. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I'm used to drink, uh, like, I was used to drinking energy drinks at that time. Like, I used to bring one to school every fucking day. Mm-hmm. And... I used to bring two to school every day, and, um, like, I just remember, like, oh, cool, fucking rock stars that I don't, I don't gotta pay for, all mm-hmm. right, so I fucking kept on going, and next thing you know, like, I count ten, and then I throw the cans away, and then I just stop counting after that, and then kept on drinking them and drinking them and drinking them. Dude, and I rem- I felt fine. I felt fine, too. I just knew I was wired, because <laughs> we all knew you were wired. Dude, on the indie stage, like, they're already done cleaning up and shit, so it was a big field. I ran around that thing three times, and I am not a runner, dude. I can't run without, like, getting gassed out, so I ran that thing three times nonstop, and I did a front flip. I didn't land it, (laughs) but I did a front flip. (laughs) You landed it on your ass, but... I I fucking flatted that shit. I pancaked that shit. But, uh... (laughs) Uh... After that, I just remember, like, being so wired. I was giving everybody that I saw, even if I talked to them for, like, one second, I was giving them a hug. You were tweaked. I was tweaked. I looked like a fucking tweaker getting ready to set us on fire. Oh, that was nice. That's a story for another day. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, by the time I got into the car, I was sitting next to Marcus's sweaty-ass body, and I was out. 
You were leaning on his shoulder. I was leaning on his shoulder. I felt the need to call everybody and tell them how much I love them and how much they mean to me. It's kind of like he was drunk, almost. Yeah, so I remember calling this girl that I had a crush on, telling her how much she means to me, and I haven't told her that she I have a crush on her. I was kind of like making moves, but I mean, I fucked that up <laughs> like <laughs> that. As soon as we got home, I was on the floor twitching. Yeah, we, we got back to my house. You laid down on my fucking floor with my dogs. My dogs were all over you. You were pushing them away. So I sit down on the couch, and I like, I'm like, on my phone for a little bit, and I look back down at you. And you're literally just sitting there. Your eyes were fucking wide open, bloodshot. You're sitting there twitching. Yeah. Like, I, I was I was actually worried that you were just going to fucking seize and die or some shit. Like, that was that was a little spooky. Oh, you missed the fucking in and out part. We stopped. Oh, I we, forgot about that. We yeah, we threw up. We stopped at in and out. And I, I didn't throw up. Marcus did. <laughs> I, didn't you go into the bathroom and throw up? Tried to. I oh, couldn't. yeah. So, yeah, we stop at in and out because we're all hungry. It's like, what, fucking 11 o'clock at night at this time? That was like the second wave of energy for me because yeah. I, I was energetic. Huh. My next-door neighbors are being a fucking tweak. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go um, on. <laughs> so, yeah, we get to in and out where we walk in, fucking we order our food and whatever, and then Jacob disappears. I guess, he, like we just said, he was in the bathroom trying to throw up, but you couldn't? I something? couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't throw I tried. Up. So, we get our food, we go back into the car, and then we're, we're all buckled up, we're getting ready to eat and stuff, and just hit the road and go home. And then we're waiting on one person, that one person was Marcus. Because he wasn't closing his door, he was just kind of like leaning over like the side of the door, and you couldn't hear him making any noises, but you just heard like splashes. Like somebody was pouring a water bottle out on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Mark, is you good? And I kind of like look over his shoulder a little bit, and he's just throwing up. Spewing. <laughs> just fucking, just straight rock star. <laughs> and whatever else he had to drink. And that was the funniest fucking thing, because like, I was like, you all right, man? And he kind of like looked up at me. He's like, yeah, dude. And then uh, started throwing up again. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine, dude. <laughs> and then started throwing up again, and that was, oh, God. Then we got home, and then Jacob started twitching and doing his thing. It's funny because it's like we practically just ended this right here, but we still got like some shit to talk about. Oh yeah. Okay, so fucking. I think we pretty much already explained the fucking bitch who carried her baby. Yeah. I'll let you tell that story. <laughs> so, at the show, we were. Who was playing? Uh, at that time, I think it was King Di. Actually, no, I think uh, it was, it was near King the Diamond. end of Hell Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're just chilling. That's and, when King Diamond was like fucking uh, mayhem. Yeah. I popped out of the mosh pit for a little bit. I was sitting down. I was resting. I was out of breath. I was I'm fucking chugging another rock star. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I, like, I heard yelling from behind me. Like, like, obviously there's yelling throughout the whole fucking place. But, like, this was like, like a stop kind of yelling. Yeah, yeah. Like, turn around and there's this fucking bitch. Some fucking dumb retarded bitch. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> he said that in the last one. <laughs> exactly. <like> that. <laughs> That's exactly how that shit That's, played out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, so this fucking bitch had a pipe in her hand. And a baby on her chest. She was just walking through the mosh pit. Everybody was, like, fucking jumping in front of the people in the mosh pit. Trying to, like, make sure she doesn't get hit with the baby. And... She was just kind of like looking around, like, like what, what, what? like, like, she's like, not doing anything wrong. You're walking through a baby with fucking weed in your, like, you're, you're walking through a mosh pit with a baby on your chest with weed in your hand. Walking through a baby. Walking through a baby, yeah. Uh, that's what would have happened if she got decked. <laughs> right. It would be stepping on all, like, all over her and that kid. Yeah. So like, that pissed me off. Everybody was yelling at her. It pissed everybody off. She sat down like n- yeah, nonchalant. She sat, she sat down like it was nothing. Like she just sat back down and started fucking <laughs> she took was, her baby out. She put him down and started smoking. She was probably like, yeah, that's fucking bullshit. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, Not knowing right. that it's all directed to her. <laughs> right? Bro, like that. Oh my <clears throat> God, that pissed me off. And um, I remember uh, there was this guy right on, like right on the outside of the mosh pit. He was, he was chilling. He was just kind of like standing there just drinking a beer. And then I remember I got pushed 
and I went right into that guy. Beer all up and down my back. I remember that. And, like, it was, I was pissed because I just reeked a beer in at that time. Like I said, I was like 15 or 16. I didn't, I didn't drink. Not like that, at least. I love you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, that was, ah, uh, that pissed me off so bad because I was just soaked and it was, I was getting, it was kind of going like sundown. Yeah. So it was starting to get a little bit colder. And I remember you stepped in a can of, like, you stepped on a can of beer. Yeah, so, another thing is, like, with as much as beer is, I've never seen that much beer get wasted. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I was getting splashed with beer a couple of times, but it wasn't, like, nothing like you did. Like, yeah. nothing like you got. I was you literally drenched. Soaked. I was drenched in fucking beer. So, I was like, oh, I mean, I got, like, maybe a few spills on me, maybe a couple of drips, and I was kind of, like, just walking, checking out, like, the scenery and shit, going all the way to the back just seeing like the stage and shit they'll get like absorbing the whole thing i walk back down i step on a fucking three-fourths full can of modello that shit shoots right up my shorts touches my nutsack <laughs> literally give me a little kiss <laughs> yeah like that's how hard it shot up i literally got <laughs> it, it went up one short leg and came out the other <laughs> so like you piss yourself i remember that yeah, my my fucking bottom half was cold. I was pissed off. I wasn't that pissed off because I still enjoyed myself. Better pissed off than pissed on though. Now I reek of fucking marijuana smoke, beer, marijuana smoke, and body odor. Yeah, everybody reeked. So I was pissed because <laughs> as soon as I got home, like the next morning, you know that was the first thing that you could smell is like those three things. So, how was your uh, experience being pushed into the market? <laughs> Alright, so, like like we've already established, I was a little bitch, so I didn't want to jump into the pit. I ended up getting bumped into the pit on, like, the <laughs> biggest pit on the fuck, at, like, during the night. That was the Slayer show, That too. was Slayer. First off, I'll talk about, like, how that, like, the f- Slayer pit, I got the experience of it. I was against the guardrails with Marcus... Slayer was about to come out. Delusions of Slayer was playing. I was, like, absorbing the scene. I was looking at Marcus. Marcus was almost crying. So, uh... Happy tears, happy tears. Yeah. Marcus just disappears. Marcus disappears. You kind of pat on my shoulder. And you're like, hey, you might want to move. And I was like, why? What's going on? There's nobody fucking behind me. Like, there's nobody standing behind me. There's, like, a bunch of people standing behind me at first. And I look back, nobody. It's just the pit opening up. And it's a big-ass pit. Hold up. I'm going to pause this really quick. All right, we're back. Sorry about that little interruption. But, uh, yeah, there's a big-ass pit that was opening up behind me. And I could literally feel the wind from everybody, like, just circling super fast. I, get, I couldn't even see you, and I couldn't even see everybody else. Literally, all Those I saw were, we were with. bodies. I couldn't even find your dad. Yeah. So, um, we were... <laughs> I remember just thinking, how can I get around this without getting decked? And I managed to do it, and I was just staying really close to the barricade, everything like that. As soon as I decide to go up near it, I get pushed in. As soon, like, before I can even react, somebody just decks me to the ground and, like... You fell into the pit. Yeah, like, I got pushed in the pit, and as soon as, like, I could react, I just get... I just get flattened. <laughs> yeah. I get decked hard. I remember seeing that, when I, like, when I was in the pit, and I had to hop out because I was fucking crying from laughing way too hard. Yeah. You, you know, like, uh... <clears throat> You ever see Boys in the Hood? Yeah. You know that scene, like, before Ricky gets shot, you know, Cuba Gooding Jr. goes like, Ricky! Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, at least Marcus or Austin said that before I, I ate the before I ate shit. Jacob! <laughs> Boom! And you're done. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, like, knowing the mosh pit, you get knocked down, you get picked right back up. 
Before you even got back up, you got dropped again. Yeah. <laughs> Not I, only that, but the person who was picking me up got dropped on me. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember very clearly seeing, like, when I saw that, like I said, I was like, I had to jump out of the pit because I was fucking laughing way too hard. I was, I was almost in tears. And I was barely catching my breath as soon as I saw you, like, get smashed again. <laughs> I lost it all over again, and it was like ten times worse because I, I I literally couldn't breathe. <laughs> I'm just so thankful for adrenaline. Yeah. I didn't feel a thing, dude. <laughs> the only thing that I felt was just like I'm gonna do a sound, and you're probably gonna like be able to tell what it sounded like, like that. <laughs> just a thud. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I hit the ground pretty hard, and I got back up. I finally managed to jump out. Then after that, I was like, that was an experience. I don't know if it was a good experience, but that was an experience. All I all I knew right there is that I did my fucking chair. I was in the pit. I don't have to go back in there. Try not to go back in there. Yep. And, yeah, that hurt. I hurt a lot. You got used to it, though. You, it you it didn't it didn't hurt in the moment. It hurt like Afterwards. the next day. Yeah, because <laughs> my neck was sore. My shoulders were like bruised. That's from a lot of head banging too. Not to mention Austin got like this the living shit scratched out of his back. Oh yeah, yeah. He had straight up like claw marks on like running down like his right side shoulder. Yeah, he's a short dude. So it was like imagine a hawk trying to grab like a dog. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what his it back like. looked like. So. Yeah, that was just a wild night, and I'll never forget that. It truly, like, changed my life. There's moments where it's, like, difficult to pinpoint, like, something that changed you. That was definitely one that changed. Well, I'm glad I could do that for you. I'm, I'm glad I could show you the world of metal, what we're about. Yeah, it took me a little bit afterwards to, like, finally find my place in the metal world. But, yeah, I'm here now, and I love Slayer, I love Metallica, I love Pantera. All those, like, mainstream bands, or the well-known bands, I fucking live for. That's 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 my sound, you know? That's, that's what I'm always going to be into, no matter what. It's just something that I found that I'm passionate about. You know, I, I'll probably never be able to play like them, but their, their music inspired me to do something that, you know, I never thought that I would get into and right. it was because of that one night it's, it, it's weird because you know you you never know until you try it right until you try it is like when you actually like figure out you know something that you, <laughs> you look, I just took a picture of him and he looks stoned as fuck <laughs> <Send it to me. laughs> alright but yeah, it's like you actually have to put yourself out there to like figure out something that you love. Yeah, and that if, was... if you, you got to go through things with an open mind. If, mm -hmm. if you don't, you're never gonna learn. You're never gonna get these new experiences. You're never gonna enjoy a whole lot of things that that you're not used to. If you're not used to something, obviously, it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to it. Yeah. And but once you do get used to it, that's when it like really like hits and. You're you're gonna you're gonna learn to enjoy it. It's like with um, my first metal show, like I wasn't. I was kind of like Jacob, and like when he was going to the fucking Mayhem Fest, and it's like um, I wasn't sure what to expect. I went with my aunt Paula, and um, she. It, it was actually the uh, Mayhem Fest in twenty. 12? Then Disturbed play. Yeah, I remember. It was either 12 or 13. Yeah, I remember Disturbed played. Uh, we were supposed to go see System of a Down, but um, it was raining that day, and it was at Shoreline Amphitheater. Mm -hmm. My aunt didn't want to be sitting in the rain all fucking day. Understandable. Yeah. <coughs> but, um, yeah, that it was like, I was super, like, confused, and, like, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, why are those people, like, why, why, why do they have weird paint on their face? So, like... <laughs> Why are they half naked? <laughs> like, I'm like 12 years old. I can't be seeing titties like that. Like, <laughs> that's not good. I'm too young for this stuff, man. Right? And then, like, another thing was like the fucking smell of marijuana. My first 
like thought was my th um, was my first concert ever was ZZ Top, and like that's what that kind of brought me back to. And like I've never really been raised around that stuff, and so being at those concerts and like being around all that stuff, it was a new experience. And like, and I what I took out of that first metal concert is like it's there's a lot more than just fucking punk there's a lot more than just fucking classic rock yeah and it's like that opened my mind up to metal i started listening to more metallica i started listening to fucking iron maiden i when when i was a kid my dad gave me a fucking iron maiden cd and um it was satellite 15 and i've been listening to metal ever since Mm -hmm. And it's always just my mind is always like I've always been looking for more and more metal. Like I um I can go anywhere from like like I said Metallica. I could go to fucking Cannibal Corpse. I could go to Whitechapel. I could go to fucking Wage War. Like it doesn't matter. Like if it's metal, I I'm probably gonna like it. There's a select few bands that I don't like that I don't really feel like getting into right now. So I'm gonna that's gonna bring me on a whole different tangent. <laughs> yeah. And uh but yeah, I'm I'm a pretty open minded person when it comes to like music and especially metal. So yeah, I'm I'm happy that I went to those concerts, that I went to the Mayhem Fest in twenty uh twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, whatever it may be. And I'm happy I brought this dude to fucking warp uh warp tour, the fucking that that show in twenty fifteen. Not to mention that that was also the last Mayhem Fest. Aren't, aren't, aren't they talking about bringing it back? Yeah, it's in the talks, but it's going to be like under a new ownership. Yeah. But still, it's the Rockstar Mayhem Festival name. You think they're going to be hanging out, handing out free rock stars? They don't. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> right. You know, it was supposed to happen this year, but like with the fucking virus and everything. Yeah. It's obviously going to be placed on hold because it's a summertime event. Mm -hmm. But... You know, whenever it does come back, I'm definitely going. I'm going 100. percent You know, I was we were there for the end. We might as well be there for like the rebirth and shit. So, yeah, that was definitely a fun time, and I'm totally glad that I was open-minded enough to go get into a new type of lifestyle. I guess you could say. Yeah. Because it is it is a different style. You know, being like going from pop punk to just fucking straight up thrash metal and shit. It's <laughs> yeah, it's like. It's a big fucking change, and you really got to be ready for it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for listening to this episode. Not going to promise uh, when the next episode is gonna, episode's going to come out, but just bear with us. We got a pandemic to go through. Uh, yeah, my name's been Jacob. This is Joseph. Yeah, boy. Thank you for listening to the Real Neil podcast. We'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. See you later.